This episode of Combs Design is brought to you by Make Nashville, but more on that later. Today I'm building a simple, yet classy, display box out of zebra wood and wangy. The key to making a simple box like this work is the attention to detail. I made sure to cut my sides to final length and then sneak up on the miter cut. This removes the least amount of material possible and lets the grain flow around the piece. The wrapped grain will work for three of the corners. The corner where the two ends of the board meet will be hidden on the back side. Next, I cut the bottom panel out of half inch plywood. This will neatly fit into the dados you saw me cut earlier. Remember to always pre-sand your inside pieces. I always opt for half inch ply for bottom drawers and anything like them. I find that quarter inch plywood is too flexible and does not belong on high-end builds. Splined miter joints are one of my all-time favorite decorative corner joints, and they are also quite simple to make. First, you build a standard box with miter joints. Then you run the box over your table saw wherever you want the splines to be. I am choosing to have three splines on each corner, with the middle spline being elongated. To achieve this longer spline, you will see that it actually comes through the middle of the box. This will get cleaned up later with a chisel. I use the bandsaw to cut oversized, wangy splines. Once the splines were dry, I could cut them flush and sand the exterior of the box. Here I am first burnishing the edges before sanding, and you can see the grain wrapping around the corner. This next shot shows me sanding, and this shows the one edge that will not have the wrapping grain pattern. With the outside of the box finished up, I could clean up the excess spline on the inside and sand as well. I applied three coats of General Finishes Armor Seal, and while that dried, I headed over to my local makerspace. Make Nashville. Here, I could use a CNC to cut out an insert that will be used to organize items being displayed in the box. If you like my videos, hit subscribe. It is the best way you can continue to help me make free content on YouTube. Make Nashville is the sponsor of today's video, and they are a great resource. Whether you're just getting started or have a shop full of tools like I do. Working out of a one car garage really limits what tools I can have. I personally use Make Nashville to take advantage of their CNC's and drum sander, which are tools I do not have space for. Maker spaces are probably the most underutilized resource in the maker community. I made my first pieces of furniture at a maker space before I had more advanced tools, like a joiner or a planer. Back at home, I cut the insert to its final dimension to achieve a tight friction fit. Since this was such a tight fit, I chamfered the bottom edge of the table saw to reduce friction when sliding the insert in place. I cleaned up the insert with a mix of hand sanding and a random orbital sander. I decided to use a spray lacquer for the insert so I could get finish into all the nooks and crannies. While that dried, I focused my attention on creating a padded bottom to sit below the insert. This will probably make fabric experts cringe, but I simply cut some batting to size and used a spray adhesive to cover it in crushed velvet.
Once that was ready, I superglued the padding into the bottom of the tray. All that was left at this point was final assembly of the insert, and the box was finished. This is a simple project that will hopefully give you some inspiration for the holidays. Zebrawood and Wangy are an absolutely fantastic combination in my opinion. That's all for this time. I'll catch you on the next episode of Combs Design.